Hello! The goal of these screencasts will be to provide background information for the Bio 582 lab held last November 30th, 2017. This first video will summarize the key features of the spike recorder application, focusing on the steps required to measure the elapsed time between two events. Uh, this will be helpful in characterizing action potential traces. You can watch the steps or repeat them using your laptop and likely tablets, although I haven't tried it on those devices. The reason these steps should be repeatable is that I'm using an open source tone generator to produce dependable, replicable audio signals for demonstration instead of an incapacitated, undependable invertebrate to produce action potentials. Open the spike recorder application and then click on the config icon it's right here a number of potential inputs will appear in this case there's four and an input can be selected by clicking on any of the colored squares in the drop-down box so in this case uh, built-in input left has already been selected if I wanted to deselect built-in input left I would click on the black square, and now no inputs are, are selected. And let's go back. I'm going to choose the green square again. And that green square will also be the color of the trace on the live screen. After you've uh, selected a colored square from the built-in left mic, return to the live screen. I'm using the laptop's internal mic, which is monophonic, not stereophonic to introduce a sound signal from an online generator which is here there's the online generator and whose web address is here http colon forward slash forward slash online tone generator dot com unfortunately this mic also picks up any ambient sounds in the room including those caused by my voice and the click of my computer mouse. So I'll have to pause intermittently to allow the sound waves on the screen to stabilize. So, and as an example, that's my voice there. There. And here's the click of my computer mouse. There. I'm going to use sound waves of 440 hertz and 1000 hertz to illustrate how time intervals between two events can be measured. After sending out this tutorial, I'll send out data sets from actual experiments. To produce a sound of a desired frequency, you just have to enter a frequency value in this box. And I've got already pulled up my tone generator, which again is at this, uh, this online address. It's an open source application. online tone generator. Many generators actually default to concert A, which is 440 hertz. I'm going to preface the steps with an explanation, because as you can see, my voice distorts the waveform. Uh, here's the procedure. After activating the tone, here we go. I'm going to stabilize the waveform by adjusting the threshold and the time scale. Here's the time scale. There's the threshold. When I have a stable wave, I'll right click on a point on the waveform and drag my mouse to another point on the waveform one cycle away. The selected area will be grayed out. And upon releasing the right mouse key, a value will appear indicating the time between the two points, which in this case is the period of the wave. I'll be able to see how precise my selection was by calculating the frequency using my measured time interval and the equation f equals 1 over period. So here goes.
So that's a little bit off. I probably could have been a little more precise had I um, actually measured the period between a number of cycles. So maybe the distance between three or four peaks and then divided by four. But that's, that's somewhat close, fairly close actually. And you can kind of get an idea as to how you might be able to use the same procedure to measure the period of an action potential.